Wahigujika Kalsa, Wahigujiki Fate. My name is Gurusan Singh. I'm here today to uncover and inform Sikhs about the tremendous fraud that Yogi Bhajan's Sikh Dharma International and SikhNet are perpetrating against the Sikh religion. Now, just yesterday, I saw this picture from the 1970s on Yogi Bhajan's Sikh Dharma International Facebook page. On this article, they say that Western Sikhs in 1970 went with Yogi Bhajan to the, to the Dabar Sahib in Amritsar, where they say here that many were inspired to take Amrit. Well, this is really a complete fraud. I'm going to read for you from an affidavit from one of these innocent yoga students who was with Yogi Bhajan. Her name is Premka Kar. And she's, list, she's here in this picture here, second over from the left. Now while I'm reading this, I'll let you watch some other pictures that I've gathered from my experience of 30 years with Yogi Bhajan. This is a close-up again of that same picture there of Premka and Yogi Bhajan and this group of 3HO people who went to the Dabar Sab in 1970 with Yogi Bhajan. And this was a trip of 84 yoga students that went to Yogi Bhajan. And by the way, there's only one person who's still in the Yogi Bhajan group, this Krishna Kar, and all of these other people are no longer with the Yogi Bhajan group, nor are they Sikhs either, by the way. There's nobody that is in this group in this picture that are still remain Sikhs. So that tells you something there. Now this is from, again, an affidavit that was published online from Premka Kar. And I'll put a link to it in the description to this video. She says here, it was during this trip to India, and this is the same trip we're talking about here, that defendants claim, and that's her, the def that Yogi Bhajan is defendant in this case where she sued, uh, Premka sued Yogi Bhajan later for many things, rape, including rape and um, sexual abuse. So she says, it was during this trip to India that defendants claimed that I took Sikh vows. It is true that I participated in a ceremony which Bhajan orchestrated at the temple at Amritsar. However, at that time, I understood very little about the Sikh religion or what the import of the ceremony might be. I did not make a decision that I wanted to become a Sikh or to take Sikh vows prior to going out to the temple or prior to taking the trip to India. This was one of many, many instances like the abortion related above, and Premka describes this abortion that she had there in India as a result of uh, Yogi Bhajan raping her in which I did not choose my conduct or the way I wished to proceed with my life. Bhajan, was, Bhajan made the choice of what my action would be and presented it to me as decided. All of us who were on the trip to Amritsar in 1970 and 1971 participated in what defendants call taking Sikh vows, or this Amrit ceremony as they describe in that um, Sikh Dharma International uh, article on Facebook there. I participated in the ceremony because Bhajan told me it was special. And he wanted me to do it. 
I had no independent recognition of the ceremony as a religious ceremony, nor do I know what place, if any, the ceremony had in the Sikh religion. So the point here is, is that Yogi Bhajan was commanding them to do this, and they did not do this out of um, their supposed love for Sikh religion or for the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib or for Guru Sahib. It was only because Yogi Bhajan told them to do this. They were not moved to take Amrit, as the Sikh Dharma article suggests. So it's really a fraud. Now also, a Dr. Trilochan Singh wrote a book, Sikhism and Tantric Yoga, in 1977, where he spent months with Yogi Bhajan. He was also privy to watch a movie that was made of this 1970 trip, which has now been secretly stored and hidden from everybody by Yogi Bhajan's organization because they don't want people to see this movie. And so Dr. Chaloshan Singh describes in his book, Sikhism and Tantric Yoga, which you can download for free on my website, gurmukyoga.com, where you can read about Dr. Chaloshan Singh's observations. He says from the movie, he says, the doctor, documentary film on Yogi Bhajan. The film started with a caption on the screen, being a cunning assemblage of unscripted film documentary, the 90-day trip of happiness to India with Yogi Bhajan and his yoga students. Here are some of the scenes which have left a deep impression on my mind. The first humiliating scene is Jethadar of a Kal Tukat administering Amrit baptism to the reluctant and ignorant Americans, a drama organized and arranged by Mahinder Singh and his bosses. These were people part of the SGPC there in 1970, who were part of the SGPC in, in uh, Amritsar. They, the Americans, are huddled together and told that all they have to do is to keep their eyes open and say, Wahikuji ki akalsa, Wahikuji ki fateh. Every time they are given baptismal water, normally, that was what was required from them, except wearing the five Ks, all of which Yogi Bhajan does not wear to this day. It's absolutely true. Yogi Bhajan, I never saw him wear a kirpan ever. He might do in the future, while baptism is being administered in the film. One can hear laughter, giggling, and indecent, indecent disturbances from outsiders who are watching and commenting. The whole spectacle is so sacrilegious and an open insult to the authentic and traditional method of administering Sikh baptism that I do not think Sikh baptism was ever made such a mockery and empty ritual. So this makes me angry that Yogi Bhajan's Sikh Dharma is trying to pull this fraud over Sikhs around the world, that these Gora Sikhs from the West came to Amritsar and did this Amrit ceremony out of their love for the Guru, when in fact, Yogi Bhajan pushed them into doing it, and they didn't know what they were getting into. And you can see the result of it. Like I said, all of those people, people in that picture have left the Sikh religion. They've left Yogi Bhajan's group. And this is the very sad uh, state of things there in the 3HO community, that they do not want to tell the truth about what is happening. Now, what is also very alarming is how, as a result of Yogi Bhajan's frauds and his pathological lying and scamming, that many of the 3HO people, Yogi Bhajan's followers, are now getting into many Hindu practices. They don't know what the Sikh religion is about, and they are going astray from the Sikh Rahat, the Sikh Code of Conduct, and getting into all of these un-Sikh-like activities. If many of you have probably seen my other videos, and you can see from these pictures in the background how the 3HO people are participating in Hindu pujas. Yogi Bhajan himself had a Hindu last rites uh, ceremony where his ashes were spread on the Ganges River, and his um, widow, 
and two sons and daughter and many other 3HO people participated in this, where a Hindu pundit actually put Yogi Bhajan's ashes in the Ganges River there. And Sikhnet refuses to admit this or to um, put this out into the public for all to see. So as Sikhs, we need to insist that the, the truth come out, that Yogi Bhajan's people to put away these, these false teachings of Yogi Bhajan, that they admit to the frauds that Yogi Bhajan committed, and that we bring them into the light of the true Sikh path. Now, I want to read a post that was written by a Vikram Singh, who, by the way, was an early follower of Yogi Bhajan, and he was really the first of the Yogi Bhajan followers to ever really take Amrit, the sacred Amrit, on his own volition. So he is still a Sikh, and I respect his knowledge of uh, Sikhi and also of uh, this history of 3HO. So I want to read his um, post here, which he wrote on the Gurmat Learning Zone. He says here, he's in, saying in response to um, a poster there in Gurmat Learning Zone. After more than 40 years, the number of bhajanists, as he calls them, these Yogi Bhajan followers, who left bhajanism and remained Sikhs, like myself, can be counted on the fingers of two hands. Bhajanists, Sikhi and Bhajanism are one and the same. When they tire of Bhajanism, they leave Sikhi. Except for a very small handful, what kind of miracle is that? So, as you can see in the pictures, the 3HO people have gotten into this bowing to stones and rituals of the, doing these uh, meditations that Yogi Bhajan taught. This. Um, Ramukh Kaur does, does these um, Hindu um, artis and fire ceremonies. You can see this Ramukh Kaur uh, bowing and praying to Hindu deities. The 3HO people dancing around this idol of Shiva. It goes on and on. Uh, so Vikram Singh goes on to say on this uh, Ramukh learning zone, I don't know how many Amritdari Bhajanists you know but I have known many. I'm sorry to tell you that overwhelmingly they do not differentiate between Bhajanism and Sikhi. For example, all the ones that I knew put Yogi Bhajan's morning practices before their nitnam. They did, nit, if they did nitnam at all. Their knowledge of Sikh history, history of Guru Sahib and Sikh Rahat Mariyata and Punjabi culture was verging on the non-existent. All this came second to Yogi Bhajan's yoga teachings. I'm not saying this is true for all, just for the overwhelming majority. You might say, well, you don't need to know these things to be a good Khalsa. That may be true. But if your seeking knowledge is only made up of and concerned with Yogi Bhajan's yoga teachings, what kind of Khalsa can you be? And I completely agree with this wholeheartedly, that you cannot be a true Khalsa if you just follow Yogi Bhajan. And it, the, the facts bear themselves out that many, most of all these people um, that have been in Yogi Bhajan's group have left after, um, have left Sikhi after they left Bhajan's group. There's only really a handful, I don't even know of a couple other people besides Vikram Singh possibly that are still Sikhs after they left Yogi Bhajan's group. So the image that uh, many Sikhs have that Yogi Bhajan created all of these wonderful Sikhs is just not true. And don't let SikhNet and the Sikh Dharma International Yogi Bhajan's group fool you by telling you that they're, they're all these wonderful Sikhs because they follow Yogi Bhajan rather than the Sikh Code of Conduct. And they've stated this now in uh, legal documents where they follow the Sikh religion as taught by Yogi Bhajan. They practically worship Yogi Bhajan. They're going to be having this 10th anniversary 
um, uh, tribute to Yogi Bhajan where, when he died there uh, 10 years ago. And many of you may have gotten this letter from Gurmustik, I just saw it today, where he's asking for donations and inviting you to come to these um, uh, celebrations of Yo for Yogi Bhajan. Well, this is something that is not part of Sikhi, that we uh, worship uh, a dead man, basically. And they worship at the grave of his dead, of his uh, the place of, where he died. Uh, they're going to be making this 10 foot high um, statue of Yogi Bhajan made of bronze, spend thousands. I checked on it, it could cost as much as $50,000 to create this. So Yogi Bhajan, he created this Bhajanism, is all I can think of to call it. And these Bhajanists, they follow him. They follow all of his teachings, these anti gurmat teachings about worshiping stones and, and uh, these gems they use for uh, power and healing uh, qualities. It just goes on and on. Let me read also, uh, this was another post by Vikram Singh, which shows the mentality of the 3HO people. He says here, as an American Sikh, 20 years as a budgetist and 24 as an ordinary Sikh, I've heard this kind of talk many times. When I was a budgetist, the level of understanding of Sikh history, Sikh Rehab Mariyata, Punjabi culture, and history of our Guru Sahib am amongst my peers was abysmal, verging on non-existent. In addition, the level of arrogance that we had the right way of Sikhi, or that we were ongoing to save Sikhi from extinction was extremely high. And this is true, that if you talk to the people at Sikh now, if you talk to the Yogi Bhajan people, they will, they have a prejudice about Yogi Bhajan's teachings being the way that will save the world. And this needs to change because it's a prejudice that doesn't have any part of Sikhi. Personally, I am deeply disturbed, this is Vikram Singh speaking again, personally I'm deeply disturbed by what I see happening in the Bhajanist movement. In the field of teaching Kundalini Yoga, the movement seems to be expanding exponentially. There's nothing wrong with that per se, but the New Age people, sorry I can't think of any better term, to whom the Bhajanists are teaching this yoga, are very open to and, what's, and somewhat familiar with Hindu terminology and practices. Thus the Kundalini Yoga they teach veers more and more towards Hindu practices. And this is what you can see happening. Whereas again, uh, they are doing these Hindu practices, going to Rishikesh, participating with these Hindu swamis, and then also um, uh, bowing before golden statues. I had a friend who came with me to Espanola when he was filming some of these pictures. And he said, this just looks like you're in a Hindu mandir there with these statues of Baba Siri Chan and all these other statues of Yogi Bhajan. And they have hi Hindu statues too there. In, in the picture here, you can see Yogi Bhajan kept this huge statue of uh, Ganesh there in front of his ranch. Few Bhajanists have any idea of what sacrifices were made by those who went before to maintain the purity of Sikhi in the face of, a, of the relentless drive of certain factions amongst the Hindus to subsume Sikhi back into the relentless juggernaut of Hindu Vata. They don't care about the persecution, genocide, and economic warfare pursued by the Indian government against Sikhs in India. This was Vikram Singh speaking again. Instead, they have this arrogance that they have the true path of Sikhi and that the Punjabis will somehow have to follow along. This kind of talk makes me very sad and I only see further misunderstanding and miscommunications in the future between Bhajanists and the Punjabi origin Sikhs. So, again, I want Sikhs around the world to know about this fraud that Yogi Bhajan's people and Sikhnet are propagating against the Sikh religion. Look at closely at these things that they're teaching. I invite you all to download this book, Sikhism and Tantric Yoga, where Dr. Jalochan spent Singh spent months with Yogi Bhajan and really did a great job investigating this. I also wrote a book, by the way, Confessions of an American Sikh, which you can download on Amazon. It's only 99 cents. And I'd be happy to send you a free PDF copy if you wish, if you don't want to spend the 99 cents. So I hope you enjoyed this video and 
Wish you why could you got called saw? Why could you be fat day?